So one of the things that I think is different <clears throat> is there was a big enough community in Ethernet for there to be somebody trying anything. It was a huge development community. Uh, Dot3 had like 200 people in it at the time. And so there was, the industry didn't have any failure mechanism because it had so many people doing things that it could tolerate high failure instances and just brush them aside. Whereas IBM did not foster that kind of environment and uh, was determined to be reliable and succeed. I can tell you how hard it was initially because when I was at Wang, I owned Ethernet and Token Ring. And you know, we went off to build our first token ring adapter, <clears throat> which was going to sell on a probably a hundred thousand dollar super mini computer, and that adapter was going to sell for ten thousand dollars. And then the the minions of Olaf Soderblom showed up, and they wanted the royalties, not on the adapter. They wanted two percent of the cost of the machine, right? The system, the entire system. The economics just didn't work. And it made it very, very clear that competition was not, competition was to be tolerated and I think as Jeff has put very closely managed and never allowed to flourish. And it's hard to get global adoption when you build it that way, in particular when you're unlucky enough to be in the position that IBM was in where there was a transition around the compute platform and the shift to the desktop. Those two things coming together made it really hard for Token Ring to be successful in the market, regardless of the technical benefit. You know, your question about how could we ship a PC without a network? We were... You gotta realize, I came from Park. Yeah, so, so we were... We reported to Alan Hancock. Remember her? Oh, yes. I still want to be in touch with her. Um, and we came from the forward, you know, the, the 3705, 3725, 45, and which was up in Kingston, which was near Poughkeepsie, and it was the old mainline IBM business unit. And so that's that was the business that we were actually aligned with, sort of mentally. Yeah. And it wasn't the renegades down in, in Boca. Not at the beginning. So while these guys are slugging it out at the lower speed of you know Ethernet and token ring, I joined AMD and they were in development of uh, an FDDI chipset and they were competing with National Semiconductor at the time. And our perspective at the time, flawed as it is in the light of history, was so. Can you start off on what was FDDI and where did it come from and where did it fit in this time? I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we looked at these things and said, okay, this is the flawed part. In order to run faster, and we assume that even though nobody's using this stuff, as you guys are saying, it would be necessary to run faster at some point, you had to go to fiber optics. If you go to fiber optics, you have inherently point-to-point -point connections, and if you want to build a network, you have to have point-to-point, -point, do something, point-to-point, -point, do something. And so token rings made a lot of sense. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they went the route of going into an ANSI committee instead of an IEEE committee to do this, maybe because IEEE was so political at the time and divided between DOT 3 and DOT 5, but um, the standardization process was more open. They attempted to grapple with a lot of the aspects that were, you know, IBM's uh, invention in the original token ring, put it out there in the public, but, you know, once again it was it was uh, fiber optic connections. They came up with a very reliable system, dual counter rotating rings. People were looking at putting them on submarines. Uh, one of our one of our first partners in development of the chipset was GE uh, Steel Division, and they were thinking about putting it into a hot rolling steel mill, which if you've ever seen one of these things, runs at an amazing speed and if anything happens and one of these rollers aggressively squeezes this stuff out you end up going in with blowtorches to cut it apart 
and start the process up again. And so they were very concerned about reliability. And God knows why they were using a chipset at that stage of development or thinking about it, but you know, God bless them. Um, so we thought at the time that, you know, regardless of what happened in this battle between Ethernet and Token Ring, the logical successor would be FDDI, which is Fiber Distributed Data Interface, because it had to be fiber optics in order to run that fast, run 100 megabits. Um, my crew took me then to Synoptics, where I ended up becoming part of the Fast Ethernet Alliance, so, you know, I didn't stay FDDI big through the complete downturn, but, uh, um, you know, the reality is people can do amazing things with copper, and, you know, even if it does take you adding more than one pair and so forth going forward. 